Good afternoon, morning, folks. Um, it's Jules doing a, another stitch with me today. We're going to do some um, Old World Map 2, and uh, I'm going to use actually some Pattern Keeper with this. So I'm going to actually show you um, my Pattern Keeper stuff, and um, I might even cut this out and use this as part of my um, like a different video for Pattern Keeper. But I'll start first by just, if you guys haven't seen this, um, I want to just show you, um, and fortunately right now, unfortunately, it's only a uh, um, Android app, and so it's one of those things that uh, currently um, you can't necessarily use it on uh, iPhones, although I know there might be a way that you can download Android apps on iPhones. You'd have to Google that, though. I don't know exactly how that works, but there's all kinds of workarounds nowadays. Um, not every pattern is on uh, Pattern Keeper at this point, but a lot of the ones that I have now are, so it makes me very happy. Um, you can see the these are Heaven and Earth designs, and so that's the Space Traveler one, and then the Honeybee Portrait, which I'm currently working on, and then the Artisy Project that I haven't really, whoops, haven't really done anything on. Let's go back. There we go. Um, the Gecko Rouge project will work. I just have to input the blended threads. So that still has a exclamation point because I haven't um, actually finished inputting all those threads yet for that project. Um, Old World Map 2, which is what we're doing today. A couple other ones that didn't really come in so well. And then we've got our, um, our new cross-stitch collectibles, which makes me happy. And then, <gasps> what is this? This is actually a new project that I bought. Um, it, trust me, it's not going to be started anytime soon because it's massive, but I had to get it. I mean, look, it's the signing of the Declaration of Independence. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's awesome. And so, um, but anyway, so we've got, um, like I said, now that I have these, things are going to go a lot faster, especially I've already started working on this one. And I realized on the baseball project that the, um, what's the words, um, the gridding or the, the way the pages were printed out does not does not correspond to the um, uh, way that this is. And this is the other thing I really like about, I mean, this is so amazing about Pattern Keeper is that it does put in, um, once you mark on it, like what, um, uh, what stitches you've done, it will actually put that color in so you can actually visibly see sort of how far along you are. But you can see here that this page that I've stitched actually overlaps with the next page. And that's, I'll talk about that more in the weekly update, but I know why that happened. But that does throw me off a little bit in terms of the gridding on the fabric, but I'll fix it. No worries. Um, but anyway, let's get back out of here. Come on, Juice. Here we go. Here we go. All right. I'm going to go into overall map two and pull this up. And so, and this is sort of the same thing where you can see, um, whoops, now you can see sort of you can see the fill in of everything that I've done so far but you can also see exactly how much left I have to do which is ridiculous so but I will say and, and the reason why this page isn't that filled in is because I haven't gone in and manually filled it in yet there's a lot of missing stitches in there and so um, I haven't gone in there and do it but you can see from here just how much I've gotten stitched on this page and this is all with Pattern Keeper so I absolutely love it. It is the best. And the reason why it works so well um, is because you get to highlight uh, individual little um, stitches as you go. So there are three buttons at the top. Uh, the little compass button um, helps you move the pattern around to different spots. The little search thing is when you can actually uh, highlight a certain color. So this color is 677 so you can see I've got a lot of that left I'm trying to find 677 um, and it shows you what you need to do now it will continue to highlight um, this if you then go to the compass key you can still move it around and see just how much of this color that you need to do so mostly what I need to do kind of in that area I'm not going to do that today but and then when you have um, gotten that part done and I'll show you that in a little bit here you just hit this little the, the, the ink or the pen or highlighter, whatever you want to call it, and you hit that, and then you can touch something and and it turns it that color for you so that you don't you know you don't have to do it. But you can imagine just how much easier it is to find what colors that you need to do from just looking at this. And so um, 
that's how I've been able to get so far into this 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 thing so far. So we're gonna pick a color and um, I start stitching on it. I'm gonna pick oh wrong one. So I need to zoom in a little bit more so that my hands work a little better first. Make sure that I select the right one. So I'm gonna select this one right here. Hit the compass button, zoom it back out so I can see just how much I have to do. And so that's gonna be a pretty a pretty good piece. So I'm gonna take this off. And so, yeah, I mean, it's a great program. Um, when you're doing these really big projects like I have, uh, it's, it's just, it's the thing I've been looking for for forever to try to help me um, figure out how to go faster because it's just, there's so many different color changes that it's one of those things that I just can't, I don't know, I feel like I interrupt myself all the time and I have a very short attention span so it's easy to get distracted but like yesterday last night I sat here listening to a audiobook and just stitched on old world map 2 for quite a while you can see how much more stitching I got done so this is truly a game changer in terms of my projects and uh, I love it I love it yeah. All right, now you can't see because I've also not shown you this before, but um, I moved, we've we set up an office upstairs and it is a um, sort of a work office up there. It's got the computer now and it's up there where um, uh, I need to uh, work on things, write my articles for the blog and for other things. And down here, um, where I normally do everything, is just going to be a pure stitching area. So it's going to be amazing uh, because it's, uh, it's one of those things that I've been needing to do for a while just to help me focus in both ways. Focus when I'm stitching, focus when I'm working. And so we cleaned up the... And the, the room upstairs we're doing that in is where I normally do all my filming. So we'll, we're going to go back to filming upstairs for the weekly updates and other things um, going forward. So Here we go. But anyway, so... That was yesterday. I had to work and then, oh, I went to pick up the car and oh, I had a crazy day. I mean, I had one of those days where like my brain didn't really seem to work very well. Um, just, yeah, brain wasn't working very well. And what was going on was, um, oh, I just didn't sleep hardly at all the night before for whatever reason. And so uh, brain wasn't working. And I uh, just made a lot of little silly mistakes yesterday. Not not at work or anything, but just throughout the day it was kind of a weird day. So I never got the, to the video. Um, but we were we ran out and got the um, uh, car, which looks amazing. And if you're new to the channel, my car was stolen seven weeks ago out of my driveway because I was um, puffing it, which is warming it up. And... Uh, which is something I've done for my whole life because, well, not my whole life, but for uh, since I've lived in Colorado because it's so cold. And somebody basically stole it while I was doing it. And it got recovered three weeks later and then spent the last month between the tow yard and um, the dealership while we were waiting on getting some replacement pieces for it. It was basically... Um, uh, what all that needed to really be done was just um, replacing some panels and fixing some electrical work. Oh, so let me show you. So, ah, now that I've done, now that I've done like the, these stitches here, um, I'm just gonna hit the highlight. What? Well, gonna hit the highlighter button up here, and then come down. And then there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, you can uh, hold your finger down on the button. And it'll pop up these options, select all finished highlighted stitches in the square or on the page. Uh, the When you would do it for the page is when you're picking up a, um, a project maybe that you haven't done. Uh, or like, say, the cross-stitch collectibles projects that I have. 
uh, that I've already done multiple pages and finish those, I could literally just select an entire page, hit that button, and the whole page would be highlighted, which saves an incredible amount of time. Um, this way, uh, this just, if you stitch everything in your square, then you just click that, and then it doesn't, I've been having a few bugs with my uh, program lately. Okay, so it's not gonna wanna do it. So maybe hopefully, yep, okay. So then you just do it manually. Normally it does this the other way, but my, my program or my phone or whatever has been a little buggy lately. So you just take your finger and just pop all over those little highlighted things and just click that, click okay. And then it just does all that. We'll come back up here, hit the compass, move to the next spot. The reason why Pattern Keeper is also so gosh darn awesome is when you can see exactly where your stitches need to go and relative to the colors that are next to it, that's that also speeds up your recognition and your ability to put stitches in. So I can't say enough about it. Wish I had come up with the idea. Um, or I shouldn't say that. I wish I would have been able to have the knowledge to know how to do this. That would have been good. So, where are we at here? Mm, could do that there. Come over here. There we go. Um, so, got the car back, and then we were like, we want, I want a burger. And so, we decided to, to go pick up some stuff at the Red Robin. And, and while we were heading over to the... Um, to this, uh, to the dealership, pick up the car. I was like, man, I can't order online. I can't order online. What is wrong with you know the? I guess the system's kind of messed up today. Didn't know why. And so then, hubby went to call them to order, and uh, and they were like, yeah, um, we can't take orders right now. Our kitchen's on fire, and uh, so or was just on fire or whatever happened. So I guess it that's would explain why they couldn't take orders, and. Um, so we had to get it from a different, and it was so tasty and delightful. We have some leftover fries, which are the best. And then we were like all excited about seeing the Thunderbirds because they were coming through yesterday because the um, Air Force was graduating. Um, and then there's this massive storm that was coming through. So we were like, ah, oh, cloud cover is terrible. Can't see it. And the time that the they put it out ahead of time, like when the Thunderbirds were going to fly over, where they were going to fly, and what's you know what to look for. And um, when the times passed, we were like, oh, they didn't do it. And so, and we were so busy doing other things that we didn't go and look to see if maybe it had been delayed or anything. And we had just gotten home, and all of a sudden, you heard them fly over pretty close to our house. And my husband got to see them as they were going by, but I couldn't see them. But so I was like, oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, you know, they'll be back. I mean. We're not that far from the Air Force Academy, so we'll see them another time. But it was just kind of, they, they flew all over like the metro corridor, meaning like the north-south uh, corridor, the main highways to uh, salute the healthcare workers. So they were, uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. So... And so then when we finally got home from all that, it was already like 3 or 4 o'clock or something, and then I just spent the rest of the evening. Well, no, I, we, we organized the... Hubby had put together the desk and the chair, and then we brought the computer up and got everything squared away upstairs and were able to... I, I got everything organized, so... Move the birds. They're like a little kerfuffled as far as what's going on because they got moved away from the corner of the room they're normally at and got put more in line. I think they're going to like it more though because I'm going to be up there um, with them a bit more and so I just rearranged a bunch of stuff and it's going to be good. But yeah, I got, I got about 270. Oh, that's the other thing with Pattern Keeper. Let me show you this part. So if I turn it, it'll change it. But if you look here, you can see where it tells you how many stitches you've stitched today and then how many total stitches you've had done for the entire project. See, I knew I would do that. Um, so you can see that I only have 6.97% uh, done. 
Oh, that's not good, guys. But what's cool is when you look at like a cross stitch collectibles, um, it like I'm over 50% on that. Well over 50%. I think I'm over 60% on Greeny Waterloo Place. But oh, it's so much fun to use. It's so much fun. So I was in touch with um, Christine from a stitching shop yesterday. Told her that I needed to order some fabric and and all that and it turns out she is the only one that is still able to be there at the you know basically we've had to cut back and so she's still doing orders though so if there's something you guys need she's still there and so I'm gonna order from her I'm gonna put together an order today to get some um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get that fabric for the signing of the Constitution or signing of the declaration um, was it the declaration or the Constitution I don't know, whichever one signing it is. The big signing. So. I uh, cut myself with some scissors. Yeah. That's where that came from. And, uh, let's see here. There. Ah, now it's working. So now I can show you this. Um, so I just held on the screen and highlighted. Let me try this again. So just hold on to the screen, select the. Oh, it's camera shy. Oh, there we go. Okay. So uh, so you do that, and then you just click the OK or the clear or the check mark, I should say. And then it just highlights it. <laughs> I'm not sure. Sometimes it takes multiple goes, multiple go throughs. I'm probably doing something wrong. in my head so because I've said thought now I'm like what's going on so We'll get a better setup here for the filming coming up at some point. I need to get a better holder for my cell phone. The one I have is wearing out for sure. Actually, I'm not even using it this time because it wasn't holding the phone properly. I couldn't hold it.
so glad. I, I got, I'm using the hubby's phone to record this particular um, uh, video today. I got to figure out how to do a, um, a good setup, maybe with the other camera, so that I can um, use Pattern Keeper because that really would be great. That's the best way to, for me to stitch at this point. So I hope I can do it. Garden's going good. I um definitely got some lettuce growing. It's over here. It's over here. I need to do some calculations to see, like, if I stitched 200 stitches on it a day, like, how long would it take me to, you know, I don't know how many stitches are in a page. I mean, I can figure that out, but it doesn't, it doesn't list it on here, but it doesn't have to. Um, but... I mean, because I can easily do, I think, from just using it, I think a good 300 stitches minimum per piece is, would be the goal per week of whatever I decide to work on. Obviously not on every piece, that would be a lot of stitching, but it's just so nice. So I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. I still confuse myself when I'm doing these stitch with me's. It's so very easy to confuse myself.
そうPicking a color. Picking a color. Picking a color. Hmm. Okay. through last night and gathered up a bunch of different colors that I was going to need for today. Of course, they're all sitting here. I just got to figure out where's, where's what, what's where. Well, did I pick a color that I hadn't actually grabbed or is it right here? Nope. Let's pick a different color. Okay, that's good. This up. Okay. Just gotta zoom in a little bit here. Okay. All the way over here. And I don't mind on this project that I do a lot of, you know, that I pull threads across pretty far. I really don't mind because I'm stitching so much around it in between. It usually ends up tacking it down on the back, but it just saves time. Um, I don't want to, like, this is probably about the farthest I would stretch string. If I'm stretching it like that far, that's just wasteful and asking for trouble. So. Is that the right stitch? Hmm. Is it the right stitch? I've got glasses are all fuzzed. They're fuzzed. Right. That. Oh, so it is
that's it for this little section. I'm going to move down. I like these hoops, uh, these little plastic hoops, because, well, one, it's just easier for me to hold. But two, see how it fits pretty much like the, pad, the whole entire page that I need to work on. Um, that's like perfect. That's not usually, that doesn't usually happen with my, with my patterns, but it does on this one. It just helps me to be able to stitch, you know, because I'm stitching up here, and now I'm going to be stitching down here. So um, it works pretty well. And then if you're wondering, like how I'm got that, I pretty much just have the fabric out right now, and it's just sort of balled in my lap. Um, and then this is table I can just set this down on but that way I'm not I'm only literally just putting the weight of the um, the hoop and a little bit of fabric in my hand so it's it helps keep my um, my hands and my wrist from kind of tiring out getting overworked Dogs are being pretty quiet right now. They've been pretty loud all morning, but thankfully they settled down for the video. tooth. Alright. Time to pick another color. my I think I was did something to my upper back yesterday got a little bit of a issue going on with the back I need to get into the chiropractor at some point but I don't know I don't even know if he's open and I've kind of like you 
know, playing it safe, I should say. Oh, my chair's making all kinds of creaky noises. Oh, goodness. Um, let's see, 225. here. And did I get that one up there? Yeah, I got that one there. And I got that one there. Oh, did I actually fill this color in? I think I did some of it. This one I didn't do. Must have gotten part of the way in and then didn't finish. Let's see, can I just... A work in progress. Those gonna come across here. It's just not very good. It's like the white balance is off or something, but that's okay. We'll get that figured out down the road.
here. So there's that. fix my squeaking chair. Alright, so I think I'm going to actually stop things here in the interest. It's already like 10 o'clock and if I don't stop here I add another 20 minutes onto the video then it's probably not getting out until late today. Uh, so hopefully I can get this out a little bit earlier uh, by doing this and then we'll get a better setup going forward and, and figure this out. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon.